we thank you. Lord, for the word of God this morning. Lord, thank you for this good study, God, that we've had. Lord, as we've read the, the, this chapter, Lord, and we see the great things that you have done for David and God knowing that you will do those same things for us, Father, if we'll put our trust and our faith in thee. And I pray right now, God, around the word of God that you'd help us. Lord, I pray that you'd uh, bless every word that's said. Help us say nothing contrary to thy will. But all that we'd say be to the glory of God. Should there be someone here this morning that's lost, touch them, I pray. With the spirit of conviction that they might come to know you. Lord, I pray, God, you'd help every believer in here today, Lord, to leave here this morning. Lord, with a greater determination than ever before to serve the living God, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin reading in verse number 1 of 2 Samuel chapter 22. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of of all his enemies, and out of the hand of Saul. Now, according to this, it probably was pretty soon after he was delivered out of the hand of Saul that God gave him these words in his heart. And he sang a song. He wrote these words down, how that God had delivered him from all his enemies. How many of you have faced spiritual enemies this week? Raise your hand. Now, the ones that didn't raise your hands, you faced them, but you didn't know it. I'm telling you, if you're trying your best to serve the Lord, then you're going to face enemies. You're going you're to, listen, if you're in the battle, you need to expect that you're going to have to battle. When you don't battle, you get in trouble. The time David got in his worst problem was when he wasn't in battle when he should have been in battle. That's another story. But if you and I as believers today, if we fight the good fight of faith, if it's in our hearts that we're going to serve the Lord no matter what, then you're going to face spiritual battle. And the devil will come at you from, from many directions, from many ways, and sometimes he comes when we least expect it and where we least expect it from. And David was accustomed to being uh, attacked by the enemy. Saul took 3,000 men to kill him. And, and while David was, uh, Saul was in En Gedi, I've been a beautiful place, he, David was, uh, was, Saul was in there, and David went in and cut the skirt, cut, the, cut a piece of his, his garment off. And the next day when Saul got up to leave, David hollered at him and said, I could have killed you, but I didn't. I'm paraphrasing. He said, they wanted me to kill you, but I was not going to touch the anointed of God. David had great respect for Saul, and yet later on, as, as uh, Saul knew that, he acknowledged that, but later on, Saul took 3,000 men and again tried to kill David. Now, what happened to Saul? Well, he was mortally wounded, and he called his armor bearer to kill him, and his armor bearer said, I can't do it. And so Saul fell upon his own sword and killed himself. And his armor bearer, seeing what had happened to Saul, there he too fell on his own sword and killed himself. But David becomes king of Israel. Why? Because he was appointed and anointed and chosen of God to do so. And so we see here as, as David is, is claiming and is praising God for being delivered out of the hands of the enemy, friend, you too, as you go through life, and you face the enemy, which is going to become more and more. In these last days we're living in, the devil's going to fight more and more. And friend, I've never believed in my lifetime of, of a young 58 years, I think. I had Rocky Mountain spotted fever last year, and I promise you it has affected my memory. I asked my, uh, my wife, uh, Libby. <laughs> That's bad. But anyway, uh, you know, as we go through life and we face, I believe more than ever in my lifetime, friend, we are, listen to me now. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me with your eyeballs that God has given you. Look right at me. We are living close to the coming of the Lord. Get that. Think on that. Prepare for that because we're living in perilous times. 
We're living in last days. And, you know, as, as we go through life and face battles that we're going to face, we're going to need the same God to help us that David needed to help him. We've got to have the help of God. And that's what David realized. He realized, I have to have God's help. When he, killed the Goliath, when he killed Goliath the giant, he knew that he could not do it on his own. But he said, my God, he said, my Lord, he will deliver me out of the hand of this, this Philistine. And guess what? God delivered him again. Amen. And I tell you today, by the help of an almighty God and by the truth of the voice, I believe we're living in the last days according to the word of God. We're there, friend. And the battle is being fought and we're going to, listen, you will, either, you will either win the battle by the help of God or you'll die in defeat. Friend, I'll tell you something. I told you I didn't know which way this message is going. Here we go. I want to tell you something. We're in, the, we're in a fight with the world, the flesh, and the devil. We need to wake up. We need to see and understand. You know, me and my wife's talking on the way to church. And I don't want to be a pessimist, and I'm not. And I believe in the power of God as much as I ever have. But friend, our country is gone. And except God send revival, except God's people get under a burden for revival and call upon the name of God, America is gone as we once knew it. And we might as well wake up and say, yes, you're right, it's gone. More regulations. I was fussing this morning, Sister Ann. I get money from Ann for my vacation, but now it's my money, okay? I always explain this, and she don't just give me money from the church's funds. It's my money. Frank, this probably don't need to be published today, but anyway. And uh, she holds out. I let her. I get her to hold out money, so I'll have money to go hunting and vacation and stuff. But anyway, I feel like I'm going to Fort Knox. And even though it's mine, I must report to her what I've done with it. She says, receipts, preacher. It's my money. Receipts, preacher. I'm telling you what, Gables Creek is blessed beyond measure to have a treasure like her. Amen. I got a hold of a penny that she had had out of the offering plate and picked it up and gave it to him. When I gave it to her, Abraham Lincoln, Ooh! <laughs> Ain't we having fun, sister? <laughs> now, if I could... <laughs> If I kept poking her, amen, and, and, she, and me and her is real good about going on one another like that, and I done forgot what I was going to say when I was saying all of that. But I was, I was talking to her this morning, and I told her, I said, I'm probably going to have to have a little more, a little more hunting money because they went up on my hunting license. They're gouging you every way they go. It went up $20 since last year. That's a half tank of gas. So now I only go halfway to Raleigh. I guess I'll hunt down there in the middle of Greensboro so we can come on. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, listen, we're living in those days. Everybody is out. Seems like everybody's out to get you. The government wants more and more and more, and they, and they want less and less out of people, but they want to give them more and more. When has that ever been a good idea? Somebody explain that to me. When is it ever a better idea to give people all that they want to have, you know, give it to them in their hand, and they don't have to do nothing for it? I go all over town, people want help everywhere. I try to hire people at work. They all want to work. Getting too many things handed to them. Then you say, what in the world has that got to do with David in 2 Samuel? I'm telling you the days that we're living in are days that when we're going to have to battle. You as a Christian are going to have to armor up, we're going to have to man up, and we're going to have to hold our heads high as Christians and say, in this world, I'm going to live for the Lord. In this world, I'm going to serve the Lord. In spite of the devil, I'm going to serve the Lord. In spite of the enemy, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. But if we walk around and say, well, things are always, that's right, little girl, uh-oh. 
But listen, if we walk around and, and you know, I, we live every day. We live every day, but we ought to live every day to serve the Lord. Now, does that mean we ought to quit everything else we're doing and go somewhere? No, you go, you go your daily life. You do the best you can walking in this world, but you serve the Lord in the meantime. Now, I'm going hunting. I like to go hunting. Sometimes I take out some frustrations going hunting. But you'd be surprised at sitting out there on the side of that tree. Well, that sounds like fun. Some of you look at it. You're crazy. And I'm sitting there with nothing to do except contemplate and think. And I've got my Bible with me. And that's probably one reason I don't kill no more deer. Now they probably walk right by me when I'm trying to study. But listen, we're in the battle. We're in a fight of our lives as believers, and we must armor up. We must realize we're in the battle. And the devil does not care who you are or what you're doing or what position you hold in the church or, or what position you hold in life. If you're trying to serve God, he's out to get you. Now, you know, I, I could be one of these guys I'd be pretty good at that. Somebody told me I ought to be a motivational speaker. <laughs> get up and do something. Amen. That's good motivation, ain't it? That's a good way to get up and do something. But I could stand up here and tell y'all how pretty you are, how good you are, and how that if you will just if you will just get in a place in your mind and get above all the problems of life in a place in your mind, your life will be all joy and happiness. And you know, somebody believe me. Because there's thousands out there, millions out there today that will believe that and they will walk around thinking that everything's well when, it's, when the ship's sinking under them and they won't fight. Now, friend, I don't tell you who's going to win this battle and it's the Lord, amen? But you and I, we need to be in the battle. We need to be in the fight. Now, David got in trouble when he wasn't in the battle. That's when he got in, when he should have been in battle, when the war was going on, when the fight was going on. He stayed at the house and got in trouble with Bathsheba. He should have been in the battle. When you're not in the battle, friend, is when you're going to get in trouble. That's when you're going to suffer defeat. It's when you, man, I want to be on the battlefield. And when it comes time to go, hey, man, I want to be on the battlefield. Hey, man, I want to be serving on the battlefield when it's my time to go or when the rapture takes place and we're going up out of here to meet the Lord. I want to be on the battlefield. You say, what if you're, what if you're not in church? Amen. I just want to be on the battlefield. I want to be serving the Lord with gladness. As the Bible teaches. We're not going to get where I thought, but anyway. So he was praising God in verse number 1 for being saved from out of the hand of all his enemies. And then he began to praise God for what the Lord was doing for him and how God had delivered him. <coughs> And he said, the Lord is my rock. What is a rock? It's strength. The Lord is my fortress. What is that? It is protection. The Lord is my deliverer. What is that? It means God will deliver you, amen, in spite of what the world's got to throw at you and what the devil's got to throw at you. God will deliver. He's been doing it since the beginning of mankind, and God will do it. Till he comes home, he will deliver if we'll look for him as our deliverer. David looked for him to deliver, and God delivered out of the hand of the enemy. He is my shield. He, he said, and he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God is my rock. In him will I trust. He is the one that I will trust is in him. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. That's God. He's my. Did you know, friend, if you're serving the Lord and doing the will of God, that every day you go out, the devil's trying to get you somewhere or the other? I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you the truth. If you're trying to serve the Lord, you're an enemy of the devil. If you're praying, you're an enemy of the devil because prayer is where you and I get our strength. God, help me to pray more. Lord, help me to be more of a prayer warrior than I am. I fall, I fall so short in my prayer life. God, help me to pray more and to seek thy face more. 
but it angers the devil. And he don't want... That's why when you get down to pray and you start to call on God, that things you'd never thought about in a hundred years, if you'd lived that long, would come back to your mind. Something that went on during the day that automatically you'd not thought of would come through your mind. And a problem might need to... You know why? Because the devil tries his best to discourage you from praying. But David prayed to God. He called upon God. And he said, he's my shield and he's my deliverer. He's the horn of my salvation and he's my high tower to to protect me from the enemy. Now, we face, you're going to face the enemy. And when you face the enemy, you're going to have to battle. Your only other opportunity is to turn and run. We, hey, listen, we need warriors. Christians need to be battlers. We need to fight the good fight of faith because Jesus is coming soon. The King is coming, amen. He's going to say, hey, God's going to straighten it all out one of these days. Don't you worry a bit. God's going to straighten this whole mess out that this world has gotten into. But friend, until he gets back, amen, hold the banner high, amen, say charge and fight and be in the battle for the Lord, amen. Get excited about serving God. Don't make me go through some of my illustrations of people that act happy to be saved, amen. Don't be one of them. How many of you are glad you're saved? Say amen. Pretty good. Amen, amen, I'm glad I'm saved. Now, if you're not glad you're saved, say amen. Quiet as a mouse. See, everybody's glad you're saved. Okay, you're glad you're saved. You're saved by the grace of God. You're going to heaven when you die. Amen. But don't be one of these, friend, that, is, that says you're saved and you're not happy about it. I'm saved. <laughs> Are you saved? Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? Well, I... Went to the altar, asked the Lord to come to my heart. Thrill, thrill. How many people would be happy to hear that testimony from you? Are you saved, sister? Amen. Amen. Who else can I pick out? Brother, you saved, you know the Lord? Amen. And I asked me that question. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, how thrilling is that to anybody? I know that's humorous, but you know, I run into people like that. I run across people like that. They say they're saved, but you'd never know it by their action or by their reaction. And some of them's got such a filthy mouth, you know, God better, they better clean that up. God's going to cut their tongue out. My wife's telling me about somebody that won't work at all, never work on Sunday morning at all because they go to church on Sunday. But said, Said they can cuss worse than anybody else she knows. What's wrong with that picture? Something's wrong, ain't they? Which side of the fence are they on? I'm meddling, aren't I? But I'm telling you, friend, we need to be in the battle. We need to make up our minds as believers. Are we going to fight? Are we going to flee? Are we going to lay down and let somebody else do it? Amen. That's good preaching, preacher. Preach on. Amen. I'm telling you, we either fight or we flee. You're going to get trampled over if you don't serve the Lord and do the will of the Lord. But preacher, I've got so many things to do. I've got so much I have to do. Life is so busy. Yes, it is. And until Jesus comes back, it ain't going to get no better. But I want to tell you something. Until he comes back, we need to, we need to be in the battle. He, listen, he may come tonight. Hey, man, boy, I'd like to go out on this message. Amen. I'd like to go out encouraging you to serve the Lord with gladness and to do because God has done it for you. So David was giving glory and David was giving praise for, his, for God that had delivered him from all his enemies. Verse 4, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. David's looking back and he said, Lord, you delivered me out of the hand of Saul twice. You helped me slay Goliath. You used me to do this. You helped me in the battle and you protected me from the enemy. He said, I'm just going to praise you. He said, I'm just going to give you glory. I'm just going to praise you because you have saved me from the enemy. 
I'll call on you who is what? Worthy to be praised. Friend, I'm telling you, God's worthy to be praised. We'll heap praise on a lot of things, but we ought to heap praise upon God. We ought to praise the Lord. Amen. We ought to praise Him for helping us every day of our life. When we get out of the bed in the morning, the first thing I say is, Help, Lord. That's usually what I say. Help, Lord. Lord, thank you for giving me this day. Lord, I could be dead. I could be, I could be lost without God. I could already be in hell. But thank God for saving me and giving me another day. Amen. If you wake up like that, you say, Preacher, I don't wake up like that. But if you wake up like that and, and you say, Well, I, I don't know how to wake up like that. When you go to bed at night, say, Lord, thank you for this day you've given me. Lord, I've lived this day. And God, I thank you for helping me this day. Lord, help me to get up in the morning and serve you. You'll wake up in the morning and it'll be on your heart. Amen. And you set out to serve the Lord because He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our exaltation. He's worthy that we serve Him and to try to do His will by God's help and His alone. Now, as many times that I've got up and I've went out without the help of God. Now, see, God helped me. But see, God likes to, for us to ask Him for His help. And you all like that. Now, I don't know a lot about many things. Matter of fact, I don't know a lot about nothing. But my favorite thing is to like to preach. And I, I'm just I'm just gonna be honest when 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 you know when another preacher calls me up and says, Preacher, you've been doing this a long time, you know. I like that. Got a little bit of confidence in something that I might know. And I try to help them. And you like that. You like that when somebody asks your spiritual advice. You raise cattle, don't you? You got a few head of cattle. I ain't got the first clue what to do with the cow except eat it. I couldn't tell you where hamburger comes in. Well, I could, but it probably wouldn't be nice. But anyway, I don't know the first thing. Now, if I had me a calf that I had bought, would it make you feel better if I come to Dennis and said, Dennis, I don't know nothing about raising this calf, but I need, I need your knowledge because you know how to do it. You'd like that. That'd make you feel better, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and we like that. Now listen, we might not know a whole lot about a lot of things, but we ought to know enough about God that when somebody needs some help from God, we'll, we'll be able to help them when they need something from the Lord. God has saved you from the enemy. Every one of us in here, and I, and I look around, I, everybody that I know of is professes to know the Lord. And if you're here, you, listen, you know what? You're not going to hell. Amen! You're going to live as long as God lives. Amen! Your life may be almost over, but when you die, you're going to heaven. If you know Jesus, you're going to heaven. Amen! If you're not saved, you're not going to heaven, you're going to hell, and you ought to say, oh, me. But, friend, if you know God, He is your deliverer. He is your God. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be exalted above measure. Now, I'm going to go a couple more verses, and I'm going to be through, I think. When the, the psalmist David begins to relate now of the things, some of the things that he had gone through in his life, he said, I'll call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. He says, the sorrows of death, when the waves of death compass me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Saul took 3,000 men to slay, to slay David, to kill David. And that's where he gets the floods, when he says the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Oh, friend, today, what does he say? The sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. He said, I'm about to die. He said, there's snares everywhere. The floods of ungodly men are against me. You know why? Because he was doing his best to do the will of God. 
He said, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad, my friend, this morning that when distress comes my way that I can call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. And guess what? He hears me. I, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. I, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. And he did hear my voice. Hey, do you ever get so down and out and so troubled and so bothered and so worried that you're praying and you just don't think you're getting hurt of God? Well, if everything's all right between you and God, you're getting hurt of God. Amen? My wife was sitting, I'll sit and talk to my wife. Now, she is good at this. Me and her have learned each other about halfway since we've been married. How long have we been married? 30, 37 years. That ain't long, is it? Amen. And she is, she, we have learned each other. And I'll be sitting there just talking away. And she ain't listening to the thing I'm saying. I said, you ain't listening to the word I said. She'll about repeat everything I just said to her. She's good at that. She can do about eight things at one time. I'll do good to chew and eat at the same time. I have a process. Stick fork in food, bring fork up to mouth, bend elbow, poke in mouth, and chew till it's gone. Process, repeat. And I might get to throw in a sip of Coke once in a while with that if I can remember. But my wife, she can do a bunch of stuff like that. And I think she ain't listening. She's hearing every word I say. Hey, listen to me. My God in heaven, even though sometimes I feel like he's not listening to a thing I say, he never misses a word I say. Amen. You know what it makes me do? It makes me search my heart. God, did I do something that you're not hearing my prayer? God, have I sinned that you can't hear me? Have something come that I can't, that I've got a block between me and you that our fellowship's broken? And when I find out there's not, then I'm living by faith. Amen. God, there's nothing here. I know you're listening to me. Even though you might not feel it, God's always here. God always listens to the cries of his children, whether or not we feel it or not. I had a question asked. Not long ago, about feeling saved. And I probably shocked them with my answer when I told them I don't always feel saved. I shocked some of you with that right then. But my self, listen to me. When I feel like that I'm on the bottom, and when I feel like I fought the battle and when I feel like that there's nobody in the world that cares, I don't feel saved sometimes. But that's when I don't go, listen, I told them, I said, sometimes I don't always feel saved, but my salvation ain't, be, ain't based upon what I feel. My salvation is based upon my faith in the Word of God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. And he said, if I'd call on his name, he'd save me. I did. He has. Whether I feel like it or not, amen. amen. You might not always feel like you're saved, but if you've done what God said and done what the Bible said, you've called on the Lord and believed by faith in Him and put your trust in Him, then, friend, no matter how you feel, you're born again by the grace of God. And you just ought to shout amen on the general principle that you know God whether you feel like it or not. I don't feel like shouting amen. I don't always either. But don't let the devil know it. Amen. Don't let him know you don't feel like you're saved. So salvation, and I'm sure David in his distress, what did he say he did? I called upon the Lord. I know a very prominent man of God that's already went home to be with the Lord. You'd know him if I told you. But I'll just tell you, he's Ralph Sexton Sr. He made the comment one time, and Brother Ralph, I, I conversed with him quite a bit. Brother Ralph Sexton Sr. was a great man of God. Nobody can deny that. You can, but it'll be a lie. But he made the statement one time that he went at one time. He said, I went, he said, I went seven years without ever hearing from God. Seven years. But if I look back on his life, I never dare you which seven years that was. 
Oh, was God there with him? Yes. Was God using him? Yes. Was, but listen, he didn't feel like it. But God was hearing him. He was, Listen, I'm telling you what, friend. We live by faith and not by sight. We live by faith and not by feelings. We live by faith and not what other people think. We're living by faith. And the psalmist said, in here in Samuel, David said, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. And he did what? Hear my voice out of his temple. Hey, hey, where's the temple of God? It's somewhere there around the throne of God. And God in heaven, David said, out of his temple, he heard me. Right out of the throne room of God, God heard me. And when he heard me and my cry did enter into his ears, guess what happened? God shook the earth. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundation of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. The fired coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down. And darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. And, his wi- and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness pavilions around about him. Dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals. A fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered His voice. And He sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared. The foundations of the world were dis- were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of His nostrils. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from him that hated me, for they were too good for me. Guess what he's saying here? When I didn't feel like I was being heard, in my distress I called upon the Lord. And when I called upon the Lord, He heard me out of His temple. And when God heard me, amen, God did something. Amen. Thank God God reacted and God helped Him. And God did what He needed done in His life. I'm telling you, my friend, Stay close to the Lord. If you're fighting the battle, keep fighting the battle. If you're, if you're, it seems like the enemy's going to overrun you, cry unto the Lord. If you feel like you're distressed, in your distress, call upon the Lord, and He will hear you out of His mighty temple. He delivered me from my strong enemy. And from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Do you know God loves you? Did you know God cares for you? Did you know that in 1 Peter chapter 5, in verse number 7, he says, Cast in all your care upon him, for he careth for you. I'm telling you, friend, today, if you're fighting a battle and don't know where it's going to end, I'll tell you where it'll end. It'll end with you, the victor, if you'll stay close to God. And listen, friend, if you think we're living in perilous times, you're right, we are. And what does that mean? We need, as believers, as the body of Christ, as warriors together, we need to fight the battle, amen. We need to contend for the faith. We need to hold our heads high in this world. You say, but what about the terrorists of this world? Hold your head up, amen. Hold your head high. What if they come to me, want me to renounce my faith? Amen. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Amen. And look to him and say, God, help me. And the grace of God will be there when it comes time. Amen. So shall he save us from our enemies. Amen. I want to encourage you in the Lord today to fight. Fight the battle, good Christian friends. Fight the battles, you soldiers of the cross. Be a soldier. Get in there. Get on the front line and serve the Lord with gladness. Father, we thank you for the word of God today. Lord, I'm through. I thank you for your help. God, I pray that you'd encourage us in the Lord. Father, I pray that you'd help us in the Lord that we might fight the battle to be good soldiers of the cross. Lord, the devil tries us and the devil tempts us and God, many ways he's got to deceive us and many ways he's got to try to destroy us. 
But God help us to be sensitive to the Spirit of God and have discernment when the devil's trying to fight that God we know and God we look to Thee because You are our refuge and strength. You're a very present help in time of trouble. There be someone here today, God, that thinks the battle's lost. I pray, God, You'd encourage their heart. There's someone here today that's lost. I pray that You convict them of sin, that they'll come to You in Jesus' name.